Hi and welcome back to another episode of ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Timorese President Zeram Zorta condemns violence in Brazil. Timorese President José Ramos Horta felt disappointed by the act of supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro to ransack the National Congress, Supreme Court and the Presidential Palace Planalto in Brazil. The Brazilian Federation once again plunged into a chaotic situation after the inauguration of the newly elected president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, on January 1, 2023, that took place at the National Congress in Brazil. É com profunda consternação. I felt deeply surprised and concerned by the following event of the barbarians and violent attacks to the Brazilian democratic institutions by the former President Bolsonaro supporter. Do ex-presidente Bolsonaro. Horst also said, the violence in Brazil similar to the siege by the supporter of former US President Donald Trump to the Capitol Hill in January 2021, because he did not agree to the result of the election that won by the current President Joe Biden. Refugiado neste momento nos Estados Unidos. It reminded us the highly orchestrated siege by the President Donald Trump in USA for the ransacking of the highest, most symbolic institution of democracy in Brazil, the American Congress, which I knew very well from long years of work in coexistence. Looks like it was a copy-paste effect for what happens in Washington, USA by the supporters of former Brazilian President. It is the act of extreme gravity that all the CPLP countries, the European Union, all democratic countries in the world, must decline and condemn all without hesitation. Timor-Leste's President José Ramos Orta was also invited to attend the inauguration ceremony of the newly elected Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva on January 1, 2023 in Brazil. More than 100 Rohingya refugees in Aceh, Indonesia, to be moved to camp. A local disaster agency official said a boat with 185 Rohingya refugees landed on the shores of Indonesia's Aceh province following hundreds who arrived late last year, fleeing desperate conditions in refugee camps in Bangladesh. Hundreds of Rohingya have reached Aceh in the past few months, including a boat that washed ashore carrying 174 in last year. Fahmi Irwan Ramli, Aceh Besar District Police Chief, told reporters the newly arrived refugees will be moved to the existing refugee camp in Aceh to join other groups already there. The United Nations Refugee Agency said that 2022 could be one of the deadliest years at sea in almost a decade for Rohingya who have long been persecuted in Buddhist majority Myanmar. For years, many Rohingya have fled to neighboring states such as Thailand and Bangladesh and to Muslim majority Malaysia and Indonesia. Nearly one million Rohingya lived in crowded conditions in Bangladesh, including many of the hundreds of thousands who fled a deadly crackdown in 2017 by Myanmar's military, which denies committing crimes against humanity. Indonesia and Malaysia meeting to discuss the development of Indonesia's planned new capital. Indonesian President Joko Widodo met with Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim and discussed the development of Indonesia's planned new capital, Nusantara, during bilateral talks. Anwar handed over 11 letters of interest from Malaysian companies related to possible investment in a new city located in the Indonesian portion of Borneo. The new capital could boost regional development with the Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak located in the Malaysian part of Borneo Island. Anwar is in Indonesia for his first state visit since being elected last November 2022. The two leaders also agreed to work together to fight discrimination against palm oil and strengthen cooperation through the Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries to address concerns. Thousands in Manila attend mass to mark Black Nazarene Party amid COVID-19 concerns. Oh, 
Thousands of Catholic devotees in Manila attended Mass to mark the annual Feast of the Black Nazarene, even as Philippine Authority cancelled its traditional parade for the third year in a row due to the COVID-19 concerns. waving towels which will traditionally be thrown at the black wooden statue of Jesus Christ during the parade. Devotees stood spaced apart outside Quiapo Church, housing the centuries-old statue to attend in-person masses held hourly for 24 hours for people to celebrate the religious festival. In pre-COVID years, millions of Catholic devotees clad in the yellow and maroon will throng the life-sized Black Nazarene statue as it is paraded through the streets of Manila aboard a rope-pulled carriage. Maritime dispute unable to define overall bilateral relations between Philippines and China. The Philippine President, Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. said the deepened bilateral relations between the Philippines and China will not be harmed by any maritime disputes since a lot more for the two countries to solidify the relationship. At the invitation of Chinese President Xi Jinping, Marcos paid a state visit to China. He is also the first foreign leader hosted by China in 2023. Besides his first visit to China as President and his first state visit to a country outside the ASEAN, in an exclusive interview with China Global Television Network, Marco said he had proposed this tour to China where the two heads of the state could talk about a range of topics including maritime issues while raising the level of communications. We constantly have a, 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 um, a communication but it is not so formalized. And that's perhaps one of the things that I would like to propose in this trip to your president, that we raise the level of, uh, uh, of communications. Both sides have a direct conversation and a direct link to their presidents, my officials to, my, to me, and Chinese officials to the president, Xi. And that way, we, do not, we can avoid any possible misunderstandings, any possible mistakes, uh, it is uh, to make sure that uh, uh, not, not to aggravate the situation, but to calm things down. Marcos reiterated his confidence that the two countries will reach an agreement on this regard. In addition, the two countries have signed several cooperation documents, including the arrangement of establishment of a communication mechanism on maritime issues. 200 stories of China land in Thailand. The first direct flight from China since the pandemic shut borders to arrive in Thailand, a day after Beijing dropped COVID border controls that had largely prevented its 1.4 billion residents from traveling for three years. Tourists said they came back after three years of COVID pandemic and they excited to come back to Thailand because Thailand is a nice place. We are very excited to come back to Thailand. We are waiting for three years already. Before the, the COVID, we come here every year. And this time I take my family to come here. Because I think Thailand people is very nice and it is also a very nice place. Uh, it has beaches and it's different from China where I come from. Passengers of Xiamen Airlines flight MF833, carrying 269 Chinese travelers, were giving a warm welcome upon landing at Suvarnabhumi Airport on the outskirts of Bangkok. Thai Health Minister Anutin Chan Virakul handed out garlands, while airport officials distributed bags of souvenirs to the arriving visitors. Speaking to reporters at news conference, Anutin said requiring visitors to show evidence of vaccination was inconvenient and a panel of experts had resolved that it was unnecessary as enough vaccination had been administered globally. The minister also said visitors not vaccinated would also be granted entry without restriction. Thailand tour buses gear up for influx of Chinese tourists. Thailand's tour bus operators said they are preparing for an expected influx of Chinese tourists and work was underway to check vehicles and make sure they are disinfected and ready to go. 
Kitsanon Bulalom, tour bus driver, who has been on the job for the past 14 years, said COVID restrictions cut down his work week from six days to just one, but he is hoping the return of Chinese tourists will change this. I'm ready. I'm so ready now. All the bus drivers are also very ready to go back to work and serve tourists. The first flight of Chinese visitors since the pandemic started arrived in the South Asian Tourism Hub, carrying an initial group of an unexpected 3,465 passengers on the first day. Thailand's longtime Prime Minister hints at re-election bid under new party. Thailand's long-serving leader Prayu Chanwacha vowed to continue his work of running the countries as part of a new political party, hinting a bid to remain prime minister after elections this year. The 60-year-old retired general who has been in power since leading a coup in 2014 said he was ready to stay on longer even though the constitution limits him just to two more years. According to the constitution, Prayut is currently trailing in opinion polls on the top choice for the next prime minister, a distant second behind the 36-year-old niece of Yingluk Shinawatra, whose government he ousted in 2014. He has yet to dissolve parliament and an election must be held by May this year. Southeast Asian countries ready to welcome Chinese tourists amid lifting of restrictions. Southeast Asian countries ready to welcome Chinese tourists. It will inject impetus into the recovery of their tourism industries after a long hiatus triggered by the pandemic, including Cambodia, Indonesia and Singapore, have since announced that they will not require COVID-19 tests for travelers from China. Meanwhile, countries including Vietnam, Thailand and Malaysia said preparations are underway to welcome back Chinese visitors with campaigns ready to promote their countries on the Chinese mainland. Tong Kong, Cambodian Minister of Tourism said that Cambodia will also welcome Chinese people, Chinese tourists and Chinese investors. I think it is not only good for Cambodia that China has resumed outbound tourism in an orderly manner, but it also greatly benefits the global tourism industry. For Cambodia, we welcome Chinese tourists very much. Cambodia will always welcome Chinese people, Chinese tourists and Chinese investors. Tourism officials and local business owners say Chinese visitors are important to their countries and businesses. Thank you everyone. We will see you all again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice and lovely weekend. Bye.